from New Orleans, Louisiana, it's the Q covering Dot Next Conference 2018. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back to the Cube here in New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm Stu Miniman with my co-host Keith Townsend, who is the CTO advisor, and this is the CTO segment. Happy to welcome back to the program. We have Benny Gill and Rajiv Marani. Both of them are CTOs. Vinny, you've got cloud services, and Rajiv, you have cloud platforms. L let's start there. When we, we talk about, you know, there was a survey when you registered for the event and said, what do you think of Nutanix as? Mm -hmm. Am I your server vendor? Am I your HCI vendor? Am I your cloud vendor? Am I your mega Uber platform of everything? We've got platforms and services. Help us understand a little bit how this fits and how you look at the portfolio and uh, we'll arm wrestle if you guys can't agree. That sounds good. Um, yeah, go ahead. You want to go ahead? Uh, so both of us obviously work very closely together but broadly speaking, I look after the core stack, the storage, networking, hypervisor, um, including Prism, and then Benny looks more at the services you're building on top, the, Era, calm, things like that. So yeah. many, I mean, given the that a bit. given the you know breadth of the ambition that we have, right? I mean, it's good to um, focus on the two layers separately. In some sense, you know, build a platform that is capable of uh, hosting a whole bunch of services. As you can see, you know what Amazon and others have evolved. You know, they've spent a lot of time building platform. And if you think about it, uh, even Nutanix for the last seven, eight years has done a really good job. And once you have a solid foundation, and building cloud requires some new capabilities as well. As, as Rajiv has said, networking security on top, now you can start building services. And services themselves have a stack, right? Because there will be higher level services that use some lower level services in this. So that's a, you know, that's a long journey ahead of us. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it, it's a great point, because every time it seems like we have, you know, oh, this next generation thing, I'm not going to have to worry about the underlying thing. Virtualization is going to totally abstract it. We spent a decade fixing the storage and networking challenges there. Containerizations, once again, it's like the application done there. Serverless, of course, will, will take care of all of yeah. this, but you know, everything underneath it, it's, it still yeah. needs to work. How, how do you, balance and give us some of that, you know, what, what's the glue versus, uh, you know, abstracting and, and going to developers. Maybe let's start with the platform. Well, the platform's always going to be there, right? And, uh, and as we look at uh, things like containers, that's actually where things get messy. How do containers work with storage is, uh, is, is one of the bigger issues right now with uh, Kubernetes and other frameworks. So, um, so we have to start with the platform, we build on top of that, and uh, hopefully abstract enough that uh, you know, the services themselves don't have to deal with the messiness of the platform. Yeah, and if you look at how um, technology is evolving, you know, the more things change, more they remain the same, right? I mean, the, the platform used to be Linux, Windows, I mean, that's the operating system on which I built my applications, right? Now the new platform is cloud. Right, AWS is a platform, is an OS, and uh, Azure is one OS, and how do you build applications that can run on these new next generation platforms? But the kind of problems to solve are still the same. I want to snapshot my application, back it up, I want to move my application one place to the other, um, I want to scale it out, scale it in. So the problems are identical to what we had. Right, but it's just that solving it in, with the new tools that we have, Kubernetes, containers, and so on. Yeah, and, and sometimes birds just fly right through our studio. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we worry about bugs, and now we have <laughs> birds <laughs> flying into. <laughs> so, Rajiv, talk to us about, you, you basically have two different types of cloud customers. You have to serve Vinny's organization. You also have to serve your external clients. Storage, network, compute has to have APIs, have to have capabilities, basic capabilities that both uh, your customers who want to build their own overlay and then Nutanix services on top. Talk to me about how do you make sure that you're building the best cloud platform to be consumed by cloud services, whether they're Nutanix cloud services or someone else's? I think it just comes down to the core principles that we have uh, built the company around, right? That we will always uh, build things around web scale design. Uh, so uh, it has to scale to very large 
deployments. It has to be completely distributed. It has to go through a certain amount of uh, vetting in terms of having APIs exposed. Nothing we do internally is, is through secret APIs. Everything is public APIs. So we're pretty, pretty stringent on some of these things. And then, of course, uh, layering on the simplicity of uh, Nutanix is the other thing that we take very, very seriously. So uh, when we do all that, uh, nice patterns emerge. I think it, uh, it, it lends itself to an elegance that, uh, that the platform provides for the, for, for the rest of the stack. So then we get to a confusing abstraction, which is, you mentioned it earlier, containers. Who gets containers? Is that your organization? Is that your organization? Is it is it a, a, a fundamental yeah. part of, of the foundation, yeah. or is it a cloud service? I think the trick is to not necessarily worry too much about the boundary here, because, you know, frankly, this is something that the industry is still figuring out. You know, what what layer is this new Kubernetes uh, thing at? You know, is it just at containers? But actually, now it's going into all the way application provisioning, load balancing. Right, in a distributed routing, all sorts of things. So that's, I mean, we work as a team, essentially, and um, there's a whole bunch of engineers that are looking at the whole picture. It's always very important to look at the entire picture and then figure out what are the right layers to uh, go solve the problem. And when you're looking at containers, the bigger problem that our customers are talking about is how do you deal with the legacy plus the containers in one environment? Now I have my application it's a three-tier application. The database, I still want to run in a VM, right? But I want to start tasting this Kubernetes thing, so I want to go with my app, you know, the web tier with containers. But it needs to be in one, one view, and that's what Calm demonstrated. Through Calm, you can orchestrate an application that's part VM, part containers with Kubernetes, and um, help our customers transition. So which layer these things are, is, you know, it's going to be an evolving answer. So Benny, I love that you started the conversation around Calm. Is Calm the first interaction that most customers will experience when it comes to Nutanix cloud services, or is there a different, one of the other services, the more likely first experience of cloud services versus uh, the traditional compute storage network? Right, so, so the first cloud service that we have announced that we'll uh, deliver is DR, right? I mean, that's the first one with Xi. Uh, once DR is available, uh, very quickly we'll add more services. Beam is another one that has to fold in into Xi Cloud services. Uh, when I say fold in, it essentially means you have the same identity and you have the same billing mechanisms uh, and the same experience. You know, similar to when you go to a public cloud, you'll see there's a host of services and they're sort of equals and you can pick whichever one you want to use. What we want to provide with Xi Cloud services is that the same experience, except that these services are now hybrid. You can have them on-prem, you can have it in the cloud, and our teams are building this hybrid view, some of it, the preview of it, what you already saw in the demo where you saw availability zones on both sides shown on one screen. Now you'll see the service footprint on both sides on one screen. Yeah, we're From an experience point yeah. of view, I think Calm will be how people will see this for the first time, because that's going to be the center marketplace that we will have. That's where people will launch services from. Right, so, so when you, where, where's the portal for cloud services? Right. And as I understand it, Calm is that, that portal. Calm, Calm is a lot more yeah. than that. It'll have uh, not just services, but applications and workloads mm -hmm. as well. But yes, the experience will start with Calm. So, uh, when, when you talk about a hybrid cloud world in the, in the platform, people are trying to understand you know, what exactly lives where. Um, when, when you hear kind of Xi, I wonder if you might be able to give us kind of a compare contrast of say, uh, you look at VMware and VMware and Amazon is, is kind of an easy one to understand as it's relatively the same stack just living in a different data right. center. Right, So we're doing things a little bit differently. Um, while we're building our own uh, cloud uh, data centers today, uh, we are architecting it in a way that we are not tying it down to any single stack, that it has to be only a Nutanix-oriented stack. Uh, we absolutely intend to scale this out by partnering with service providers, with cloud vendors, and so on. Um, you saw, you saw some, something in the keynote yesterday about running nested on GCP. Uh, you can imagine where that will go in the future, but other clouds also on the radar. So, much like we did with our, uh, with our uh, HCI stack, 
we shipped on Supermicro, but very conscious of the fact that it's software that we can move anywhere. We are building Zai exactly the same. Yeah, right? and uh, what I'd add is, while we are doing it in our own data centers right now, uh, we are learning a lot, right? And as we are learning the things that are truly needed to make uh, running a cloud easy from an operational perspective, um, that allows us to build a product that is an honest product to give to our partners and service providers say, hey, now you go run it and you won't be spending too much. Like for example, the experience that they've had with OpenStack, it cannot be repeated again, right? So that's what we want to do. So let's talk about the relationship with Google as a model going forward. Is that uh, prototypical what you're looking to do with other public cloud providers? And first, give us some color around their announcement. We have had anyone on theCUBE talk about Xi and Google, and then uh, kind of the strategy moving forward. Yeah, so a lot of the public cloud vendors are actually realizing that hybrid cloud is important, right? And as part of that, um, they're providing bare metal services and Google has this nested service to enable others to bring their own stack, you know, virtualization stack to run there. Amazon has done it with VMware. Amazon has also announced uh, their intention to GA bare metal services. So we uh, see a future where a lot of these public cloud vendors will offer bare metal and that's where our Xi stack will run, right? And also giving customers choice uh, to go from one cloud to the other seamlessly. Today we, you know, we know that Nutanix can move from uh, public Xi cloud to on-prem and back, but once you have Xi cloud running on multiple cloud vendors and you can move between cloud vendors uh, seamlessly as well. And that's a really compelling uh, message for our customers. Great. One of the challenges for some, some of us watching is you've got a pretty big portfolio now, uh, yeah. and some of the things out in the future, it's like okay, you know, where does Nutanix fit? You know, you know, how do they have the right to participate in this? Uh, wonder if you can talk a little bit about Era and, and maybe Sherlock is you know, a little yeah, bit, yeah, a little yeah. bit further out. So, um, Era is about managing copies of your databases, right? And again, if you look at where a lot of uh, cost is sunk in enterprises. Uh, I'm running my database, a production database. For every single production database, there'll be maybe tens of test copies of it. What ERA does is minimizes the cost of managing the uh, copies and also it's you know, thinly provisioned copies. That's uh, something that our customers have said that that's a real pain point for them, right? Uh, that nobody solves really well. Uh, so we decided to work on that. Uh, that's just a starting point of what we can do in this PaaS layer, and it also helps us learn this uh, space as well. We are reaching out to not the infrastructure admin, but actually to the database admin. It gives us a new audience to talk to as well. So from an audience perspective, we are broadening the scope. We are reaching closer to the lines of businesses and the decision makers, which is good. Um, now going to Sherlock, yeah, actually, if I could just one quick follow okay. up on the database piece. Yeah. Database migration's really hard. Yeah. You know, yeah. talk to any customer and you say database migration, it, it's one of the things that strikes fear in them. Exactly. Uh, talk for, just for a second, if you could, about the expertise that your team has and why you believe you can really deliver that push button simplicity yeah. that Nutanix is known oh, for. Oh, so yeah, the team that's building ERA are hardcore uh, Oracle folks who have decades of experience doing those kind of hard, uh, hard problems. And they've come here with a mission uh, into Nutanix that we are going to solve it using the Nutanix platform that we have built. Uh, there are so many things that can be done in a better way. And uh, since we have a clean slate, we can start afresh and do it right way. So yeah, from, a, a, from the, our capability to do it in the right way, making it simple for our customers, we don't have a doubt. In fact, a lot of customers who have tested this in alpha, they have uh, raving reviews on that and they just want it as soon as possible. And on the data, database migration uh, subject, we also have a tool called SQL Extract that we've been shipping for some time that helps you migrate your databases from uh, existing three-tier or even uh, hyper-converged uh, stacks onto Nutanix. And uh, so we have some expertise in the area already. So, a little bit on it, the, the, I heard the term copy data management. Yeah. Uh, is this mainly copy data management or is this actually database migration to a new 
to, to ability to move from one database to another one, or is it all of the above? So uh, it's doing management of copies. It's also allowing you to clone databases, right? Uh, so you can go to a snapshot and clone another one. Right. Migration is not yet there, but it's uh, you know it's a natural consequence of the capabilities that we have because once you have snapshots, we have the capability of moving snapshots from one data center to the other using our DR capabilities. So that's on the roadmap. Um, then further down the roadmap is uh, database provisioning itself. If you want to provision a new brand new database, you can also do that. So these are just natural transitions of what. But what we wanted to do, just like what we did with Zai, start with the hardest, thorniest problem, and then work backwards and do the simple things. All right, so unfortunately we're running short on time. Give us a closing word. I want R R Rajiv and Benny, maybe you could talk a quick second about Project Sherlock and, and give us some things that we should look forward down the road from Nutanix. Yeah, so we believe that the world needs an enterprise cloud operating system. What that means is it can run on my private cloud, in the public cloud, and on the edge, and Sherlock comes there. I mean, it's taking our stack and creating a mini PaaS version, as you saw in the demo, and running it at the edge in a way that all of your footprint appears like one dispersed cloud. And, and that's a pretty exciting space, and uh, we think that is the key differentiator that we'll have going forward. Right. And any final words, Rajiv? Uh, I think we covered, covered a fair amount of ground, so uh, yeah, thanks for having us on. All right, well, it, it goes back to the, really that distributed architecture that is at the, the core. Appreciate having the conversation. The CTO round table, <laughs> as it were. <laughs> Benny, Rajiv, always a pleasure to catch up. For Keith Townsend, I'm Stu Miniman, back with more here. Thanks for watching theCUBE.